Hi. Yes, hello. This is Mrs. Robertson, and we're reviewing before we take the test today. Um, right now we're doing worksheet form 3A. This is Math 7, Chapter 2 Review. And we're going to start at the with the last question and go backwards today as we do this worksheet. In this problem it says, Mr. Fraser bought new shingles for his house for $3,500 using a credit card. His card has an interest rate of 17%. If he does not pay off his balance at the end of the, week, the month and has no other charges, how much money will he owe on his credit card at the end of the month? Now this is just one month. So one month is what fraction of a year? One twelfth. One twelfth. Okay. So <clears throat> interest equals principal times rate times time. So first let's figure out what his interest is. $3,500 times change your percent to a decimal by moving it two places to the left, 17 hundredths, and the time is just for one month, one twelfth. Now, you may use a calculator on this problem and when you multiply 3,500, do you see my calc? There it is. Times 0.17 times 1 divided by 12, that gives you $49.58. So after one month, he will owe the credit card company, it says. How much will he owe on his credit card? Now, this is what's tricky. It's $3,500 plus $49.58. So on his credit card bill, it'll be $3,549.58. You have to add your interest to the amount that he put on the card. Any questions? Now imagine if he waits another month, he's going to have, instead of 3500 in two months, it'll be up to over 3600 So it adds up quickly. That's why you want to pay your credit cards off. Now let's go to 7, 17, 18, and 19. It says, find the simple interest paid to the nearest cent for each principal interest rate and time problem. All right, in this one, 1,400 times 0 0.038 times 1. Make sure you have 0 0.038 on the test. You get points for this. You have to show this, and then you'll have to show your answer. This is worth as much as your answer, so make sure you do those things. And that gives you $53. The interest equals $53.20. All right. Number 18. You're going to have your interest will equal 628 times 0 0.05 times 4 twelfths. You could simplify that to one third. So in your calculator, you will have 628 times 0 0.05 times 4 divided by 12. And that will give you $10.47. Your interest, you have to round it to the pennies place, $10.47. Nathan, do you have a pencil that you can use? Are you writing things down? You need to get a pencil out, please. In number 19, <clears throat> here it's $85.00 times 0 0.045 times 3. Once again, this is worth as much as the answer. So, 85 times 0 0.045 times 3, $11.48. I had to round that to the pennies place. 
$11.48. Any questions? Okay, in the next batch, find the total cost or sale price to the nearest cent. So lunch and tip. There is no tax at this restaurant or we're not including tax at this time. You get points for showing this. $6.95 times point two equals. That's worth half your answer. Any questions on that? So 6.95 times point two gives you the answer $1.39. So find the total cost or sale. Ooh, so the total cost. We now have another step. The total cost for lunch will be $6.95 plus $1.39. And the answer is going to be $8.34. So this is worth a third. This is worth a third. And that is worth a third. So that problem would be cut into three parts. Part one, part two, and getting your final answer, part three. Any questions on what will be expected? All right, on the next one, this is a discount. So you're going to subtract after you get your percent. So how much of a discount? 15%. 30 times 0.15 will equal $4.50 is your discount. So when you have a discount, you subtract. 30 minus $4.50 will be $25.50. Any questions on how to do that problem? Yeah. Got to be careful. All right. A point for this, a point for that, and a point for that. In, in the next problem, they're buying a jet ski and they have to do their tax. So $2,500 times .065 gives you the answer $162.50 for their tax. So when they go to put the final amount on their credit card or whatever they're paying, they're not going to pay only $2,500. They have to add in their tax of $162.50. So they're going to pay $2,662.50. Any questions? Okay, a tip. Again, you're going to add. A tip means you're going to add it on. So you have $12.95 times 0.15. That gives you $1.94. So the tip's $1.94. So $12.95 plus $1.94 will leave you with $14.89. Any questions on that? Everyone pretty good know how to do these? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next part. Number 12. Now, some of you, I don't think, are looking at math problems on your computer. So let's make the right choice right before we take a test. Let's not have anything else on the computer. In fact, you don't need your Chromebooks open because the problems are up here on the screen, okay? So let's close the Chromebook screens for now all the way. Thank you. Now, number 12. The regular price of a new washer and dryer is $975. And the sale price is $850. Find the percent of decrease to the nearest whole percent. Now, kids, this is a percent of change. The formula for the percent of change, it's difference over original. That's the formula for percent of change. So, you're going to have $975 minus 850 over 
what was the original price? Nine seventy-five. Over nine hundred seventy-five. So, you get points for showing this. Does everyone see that? Yes. So, now let's figure out what our percent is. Nine hundred seventy-five minus eight hundred fifty. One hundred twenty-five over nine hundred seventy-five. So you then divide. You get point one two eight. Does it tell you? Oh, to the nearest whole percent. So that'll be thirteen percent. Do you see how I got thirteen percent? You change your decimal to a percent. Twelve. The eight turns the twelve into a thirteen. It said to the nearest whole percent. Any questions? Beckett, are you doing okay on these? Good. Number 11. Last year, this person bought a book for $13.89. This year, the same book cost $15.79. What is the percent of change? Difference over original. $15.79 minus $13.89 over the original 1389 it was an increase wasn't it so then you put 15.79 minus 13.89 you'll get 1 and 9 tenth divided by 13 dollars 89 cents That gives you 0.1367. I'm going to stop there because I round to the nearest percent. The answer will be 14% because when you move it to the 6 turns the 13 into a 14. Any questions? All right, in number 10. Kenzie bought a shirt for $18. The next day she, she saw the shirt was selling for $24.60. All right, so $24.60 minus 18. How much was it originally? 18. So what's the difference? It's $6.60 divided by 18 gives you 0.36 repeating so that'll be 1 2 37 percent increase because it went up 37 percent any questions on how to do this page any questions at all on how to do percent of change discounts markups tips and interest yes it's, I don't remember what the questions say. Just do what the question says, okay? Um, Lily. That's my sister. Violet. <laughs> you um, should never have told me your sister's name was Lily. Well, she was in your class in sixth grade. Well, that's true. If it says, I will tell you, on the test, it has increase or decrease, and then you just circle it, okay? Oh, okay. You don't even have to, I don't think you even have to write the word out. I put that in whenever I did it to keep it easier for you. So, yeah, on the test, it'll ask you, and then you just circle if it's an increase or a decrease. You don't have to write the word. Yes? Um, so, if it doesn't specify, can I just give it to the Yes. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't specify... All right, now let's look at the first nine problems. We'll start with number one. Um, now, on the test, sometimes it'll say to write it as a, an equation. Sometimes it'll say write as a proportion. And sometimes you can just choose whichever way you want to do it, okay? But you can't just write down the answer. You have to do one or the other ways. So, on this one, 20%, you have to change it to a decimal, 0.2%. Of means times 120 is means equals what number? All right. So when I do that, 0 0.2 times 120 equals 24. N equals 24. Okay. Now, if you do it as a proportion, 
Remember the portion is part over whole equals percent over 100. Let me do that in a different color ink. So, in this problem, you would have part over 120 equals 20 over 100. You would have to show that. So you could either do it this way or this way. So then you would have 120 times 20 equals P times 100. Divide both sides by 100 and you'll get 24. Okay? Yes? So we can do it either way. On these, it didn't matter. On the test, sometimes it's very specific. Okay? If the test says a proportion, you have to do a proportion. If the test says an equation, you have to do the equation. But if it doesn't tell you which one to do, you can choose whichever one. Yes? Yes. So, let's do the number two using an equation. 15 is means equals 0.15 times a number, okay? To get the answer, I divide both sides by 0.15, and 15 divided by 0.15 equals 2.25. Is that right? 15 divided by 0.15. Yeah, it's 100. I was thinking it wasn't that. So here you ended up with 100 equals n. Now, if you did it the other way, I'm going to do it in green. 15 is the part, so you're going to have 15 over the whole equals 15 over 100. Well, that's pretty easy. W, 15 over what equals 15 over 100? W equals a 100. That one's pretty easy. I don't think they're that easy on the test. Now, the next one, 8 is means equals n percent times 64. Now, in this, you divide both numbers by 64. And 8 divided by 64 equals 0.125 equals n percent. But then you have to change it to a percent. 0.125 is a decimal. It equals 12.5%. So the answer is 12.5%. You had to change your decimal to a percent. Now, if you had the proportion way, 8 is what percent of 64? 8 is the part. 64 is the whole. You don't know what N is over 100. And then you would get... 64 times n equals 800, divide both sides by 64, and 800 divided by 64 equals 12.5, and that's your percent. Any questions? Wait, so the answers vary, or should we... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, it's the same. 12.5%, 12.5%, they're the same. You just maybe couldn't see the decimal point. You get the same answer when you do it either way. Oh. Connor. So number two, I think 15 times 0.15 and I got 2.25. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is, okay, your equation's not written correctly then. 15 is means equals 0.15 times n. To undo multiplying, you divide both sides by 0.15. That's right. Yes, that's what I have there. Okay, number four. Now, in this group, it says write an equation for each problem. So this one, you have to do equations. Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, 15 is means equals n percent times 48. That's my equation. Divide both sides by 48. 15 divided by 48 equals 0.3125. So n equals 0.3125. That's n percent. So when I change this to a percent, you move it two places, n equals to make the percent sign go on here, 
31.3%. So the answer is 31.3%. When it wants a percent, change your decimal to a percent. Any questions? Number five, change your percent to a decimal, 0.35 of means times, what number is in, is means equals 42. To solve for n, you're going to divide both sides by 0.35. 42 divided by 0.35 equals 120. N equals 120. And always go back and check. Is 35% of 120 going to be 42? Yeah, because 50% of 120 is going to be 60. So 42 is smaller and 35 is smaller. So always go back and say, does this make sense? Connor. So we, so we do 42 divided by 0.35? Yes, to undo multiplying by 0.35, you divide by 0.35 when you write your equation. Now, Macy has completed 78% of the 50 questions on the test. How many questions has Macy completed? Here you want 78%. I'm going to change it to a decimal, so it's going to be 0 0.78 times 50 equals our unknown. Okay, so 50 times 0 0.78, she's completed 39 questions. Now, does that make sense? 78% of 50, well, 39 is more than half, so yes, that sounds like a reasonable answer. Any questions? Good. Let's go on to the next one. This, these two people each sell popcorn at the basketball games. The table shows how much they charge for the popcorn, including markup for supplies and the number of bags popcorn sold. Who made more of a profit? And explain. Okay. So, the cost of popcorn... $1.25. This person's going to mark it up 8%. So I'm going to call this one number one, and this one's number two. I'll do number one in green. So $1.25 times 0 0.08. They're going to add 10 cents to their popcorn, which is not a whole lot to mark it up. So their popcorn is $1.35. How many bags did they sell? 30. So $1.35 times 30 will give you, they made $40.50. Now we won't be finished, but we're going to stop right there for now. There are a couple ways of doing this problem. Did you do yours another way? I'm going to do it this way to show all the steps. There is another way where you combine steps but I don't want to confuse some of you with that. Number two, person number two. The cost of her popcorn is $1.40. Her markup is 5%, 0 0.05. So $1.40 times 0 0.05 equals 7 cents. So her popcorn is a dollar forty seven and she sold twenty six um, bags of popcorn. So a dollar forty seven times twenty six is thirty eight dollars and twenty two cents. Now who made more profit? Okay, now this is how much they sold. Now we have to figure out how much it cost. If it costs $1.40, if you do $1.40 times 26, $36.40. So their profit is not very much. $38.22 minus how much it costs, $36.40. 
they made a profit of a dollar eighty-two. They should have charged more for their popcorn. Now let's see how much this person made in the green. So a dollar twenty-five times thirty. Thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. So minus thirty-seven dollars fifty cents. This person made three dollars profit. Again, their profit is not very good. Um, so who had the who made the most profit? Emilio did. Okay. Now. This one was a little confusing depending on how you read it, and I think some of you might have some concerns. What's your concern on this one? Me? Yeah. Uh, so, I actually, while I watch you doing this, I, uh, I thought my answer was going to be wrong because I didn't really see any of the steps you were doing in my equation. Mm -hmm. then once you uh, subtracted uh, the... Uh, the cost of the popcorn yeah, from how much they sold it for? Yeah, I actually did get uh, the prices. Okay. And I'll be honest, kids, if you're selling popcorn, it doesn't cost a dollar twenty-five to make a bag of popcorn. And I mean popcorn is cheap to make. I think that they, they over they must have had gourmet popcorn or something. I don't know. If you go to it's like six dollars a bag. Okay. Now, kids there is a problem with the table if you let's say you're not one that likes to write a lot of words if you show it like this that it can be your explanation okay you don't have to use a lot of words if you use the numbers to justify and I have to be able to follow it okay now the last couple problems and then we're going to talk about then I'm going to give you the test to start find each percent of change Round to the nearest whole percent. State whether the percent of change is an increase or decrease. Well, 75 minus 25 over 75. Yes, I know you could do that in your head. If you put 50 over 75, I'll count that right. Then, what do you get? 50 divided by uh, 75 equals 0.6 repeating. So does it say to round it to the nearest whole percent? That will equal 67 percent and that is a decrease. Any questions on that? The next one, 8,200 minus 7,500 over the original price which is 7,500. So when you subtract, you get 700 divided by 7,500. Your decimal is point zero nine three repeating. Once again, it said to the nearest whole percent, one, two, the three won't turn the nine into a ten. So it's a nine percent increase. Are there any questions on how to do the problems before I give you the test? All right, you will start the test. Um, you'll get it back tomorrow to finish it. If you can't get it finished today, you'll still get it back tomorrow to look at it. Put your name first thing on the test. Put everything away. And then we're going to review tomorrow for the semester quarter one benchmark. And then we will... Um, Nathan, get busy and take your test. You already have your test. You haven't even been doing it. Nathan, you
you won't get any more time than tomorrow. And you'll get whatever you don't finish will be counted wrong. I can't continue to give you this extra time. You need to make sure you use your time wisely. Why?